they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the spots no frowns. Can't hop out, then we clear the crowd. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And let them know who we got in the building today. It's RJ, man, from New Orleans, Louisiana. RJ from New Orleans, so happy to have you here. Yeah, appreciate so, you know, before we hop into it, we're going to do a quick, like, a quick little icebreaker. Okay. So, I'm going to start a sentence and you just have to finish it, okay? Okay, okay. And just so that I'm sure we're on the same page, if uh -huh. I were to say, my name is, what would you say? RJ. Okay, perfect. All right. My favorite song that I wrote is? Letters in the Sky. I can't do business with you if? You're not business orientated. This chapter of my life is called? You're the problem. A song on repeat of mine is? Over and done. If you want to impress me? Flowers. Yes, hold on. Let's just take a moment. <laughs> Men can definitely get flowers too. Love that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, my biggest turn off is? Odors. Odors? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My go-to brunch order is um, avocado toast. My friends would say that I am charismatic. My favorite place to live is New Orleans. A place I would want to live is LA. A message to my haters. I appreciate you. And something that you would want your friend, your fans to know. I love you all. Okay. Haters and motivators. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> Get all the you love. Love that. All, yeah. Love that for you. So, yeah. yes. So, we're the ice has been broken. Welcome back to New York. How yeah. has your time here been so far? It's been lovely. Uh, I've been all over the place doing a bunch of things, but I love being busy. So, it's been fun. Okay. So, let the people know what you're here for because you want like a, a press one right yeah, now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it that's coming out? What are we expecting from RJ? Well, you know, I'm dropping this album real, real soon. You're mm -hmm. the problem. Um, it's going to be fire, but. You know, I just uh, about to drop this this single with a boogie that's coming out this Friday. Yes, um, yes. Got another single drop. Like we just we just in motion, but you know, yeah, it's all for the album. No, you're the problem. Okay, so we gonna jump right into it because you just brought up a boogie. Mm -hmm. I know that y'all two have known each other since like 2016. I think it is. Yeah. So so happy to see y'all working together. Yeah. Um, what sparked this collab now? Like, why? What made this time the perfect time for y'all to? collab on a song i think it was just all about timing you know what i'm saying like you said we, we've been locked in for a while but we just never had the time to really sit down together and, and go through some music and you know put it together we got other records but nothing special like this one you know what i'm saying okay. and i was out here working with stunner gambino at the time and uh you know uh boogie's producer mo who's like a brother to me hit me up like yo hey, he's in town pull up to the studio and i had just like the couple weeks prior knocked out like Mad records, probably like sixty records mm. in like a like like a week's time. So I pull up on him and uh, remember that is the first record I play for him. And he's like, yeah, I gotta hop on this. So it just it's just all about time, man. You know. What okay, I mean? so what's the what's the vibe? Is it giving summer bop? Because because yeah. the people have been waiting for a summer bop. We still yeah. it's definitely I'm, giving summer bop for real, and it's okay. and it's and it's tight women empowerment too. So you okay, know what I'm saying? It's that. definitely for the ladies. So I love the record. Yeah. Love that, and I'm really excited to hear something from a boogie too. Because, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think that your sounds together, like. Mm -hmm. I think it is really gonna give because you have that melodic sound. Yeah, yeah. He has that melodic sound, but you both can get in your rapper bag too. Facts. The homies say that this 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 like one of his best verses. Oh so, really? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna let the world decide for sure. I fuck yeah, I fuck it. It's like one of his tops to me for sure. Okay, well sure. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So yeah. in terms of art um artists in New York, you just mentioned Stunner also. Are you tapped into the New York music scene? Yeah, at yeah, all? yeah, yeah. So who else are you listening to from New York? Um I like Shice, Free Shice. I like Shice, but I rock with K Flock too. K Flock's hard. Free K Flock. Didi, mm -hmm. Didi Osama, my uh, my producer Mo, he's working with him right now too. He's going crazy. I rock with Didi. Okay. Um, Booba, Booba, been going crazy for a while. I like Booba Savage a lot. Mm 
Um, Lola Brooke is crazy too. Yeah, y'all got a lot. Y'all got a lot going on right now. I saw. Um, I've been watching Scarlett for a while on TikTok. Yes, and she finally getting her recognition. She's definitely doing her thing. And yes, I'm so glad you said that. She's finally getting her recognition because I also was watching her on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, she was rapping about like noodles and Doritos. Yeah, the glizzies, all of that. Like, and she really would just like be freestyling, like doing her own thing. And I feel like a lot of people gravitated towards her personality first because she's very unique. But now, like. She's putting her songs out. Yeah. People listening. This is New York. Definitely is yeah. on rotation everywhere. She's so she's crazy. definitely yeah. doing HD too. been doped. And that's like my brother Shout for real. So HD yeah, New York's going too. crazy. I got a lot of sounds right now. Shout out to HD been dope. I know yeah. he signed to Rock Nation. Yeah, yeah, also, boy, just did a song boy. with Fergie. Shout out to Fergie. Facts. I saw your shirt. That's all I mentioned. That's my <laughs> we boy. love Fergie over here. We love HD been dope too. Yeah. Um, so when talking about the New York um, drill scene, I think something that's interesting is, well, New York music scene in general, but you mentioned a few Joe artists. I think what's interesting is with your story, I know that you were going to sign when you were like young, you were like 17, your mom told you not to because she felt like you didn't know what was going on yet. You didn't have a a grasp of the industry. A lot of the artists that we're seeing in New York these days are very young. So I feel like it's very similar to you because they're coming up like with age and they're still like filling out the industry as they get older. What do you think about, um, for one, your decision to sign at a later age, just kind of take a, a take a break from that mm-hmm. and then also um what do you think about age being a factor in coming up in this industry if it is at all so yeah i ain't gonna lie when my mom turned that deal down um you know we wasn't living in the best condition so in the, in the deal it had some cool numbers in it so when she turned it down i was pissed off at her. i ain't gonna lie you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but now i feel like it's one of the best decisions she's made because you know during that time you know what I'm saying? Especially during the pandemic, I was able to sit and, and learn the ins and outs of the music and, and kind of like really reflect on the direction that I really want to take it rather than just jumping into it when I had right. something hot. You know what right. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it has its pros and cons. But, you know, I love seeing the young guys turn up the way they turn up. It looked like they're having a lot of fun. Um, and that's what it's all about. So I don't know. Like I said, it got its pros and its cons. You know what I'm saying? I definitely want them boys, though. To take their time, though, and, and like I said, just learn the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the most important thing about it. You know, you see them with all the money, all the jury and shit, but all that shit could be gone in a second if Absolutely. you don't know what you're doing. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I pray them boys, you know, just get their business in order, but I love to see it. Mm-hmm. So, I, of course, hindsight is always 2020, and what you were saying about just making that decision and that decision being one of the best decisions that your mom yeah. could have made. How important do you think it is to have somebody like in your corner giving you that advisement as you're coming up in your career? It's very important, for real, because I think, you know, it's, if, if when you start to pop in the music, things are happening a, a lot faster. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's, it's, it's a lot coming at you at once. So, my mom was really uh, able to really like, Allow me to step back and look at it and analyze things as they come in instead of just jumping on every little opportunity. Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because I feel like you jump on every single opportunity, it kind of devalues your artistry. You right. know what I'm saying? So um, I, I love my mom. I'm glad she was in my corner to help me help me seek, you know, and find what I really want to do before mm-hmm. I just jump into it. It's very shout important. Shout out to mama. Yeah, shout out to shout mama. Shout out to mama. So let's go from, let's start from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um... What is your earliest... See, I know this is going to be kind of a tricky question because I know your dad was like musically inclined. He was an artist. So yeah. what was your first music mem- musical memory that like comes to mind? You think like childhood music, what comes to mind when I say that? I remember sitting in the back of my, my cousin's car and my mm-hmm. dad was in the passenger seat and we was riding and my dad was a big fan of Eminem. I had to be like five or six, and this is how far back like it goes. I had to be like five or six, and they played Renegade by Eminem. And uh, I remember just rapping the verse like from the top to the end of the damn mm. song flawlessly. And okay, I just remember my, my, yeah, I just remember my pops being like mad proud of me. Like that was, I don't know, that's such a small moment, but that's just one of those pivotal moments in my life to where mm-hmm. I knew like, this is something I like to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Of course, now I don't remember like that fucking song at right. all type <laughs> shit. But, uh, but, but now at, I remember that time, that, you know, word for word, bar for bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad was heavy on Eminem. I love full, full circle moments in conversation. And I feel like we kind of just, we're having one right now because, mm-hmm. 
you said your earliest memory was Eminem, and yeah. then obviously why just yeah. dropped. Yeah. Um, now, question: When mm. it came to why, were you sampling Stan? Were you sampling Thank You, the original? What was what was your inspiration uh, uh, behind that? Stan was definitely the, the influence for it for sure. Because like I said, my Shout pops, yeah, my pops was heavy in the Eminem. For I don't mm-hmm. feel like he get enough credit. Like the numbers show, but niggas in the streets be hating on M M M him. You don't think that he gets enough credit? <laughs> nah, man. Especially not from the younger generation. I don't know. I see a lot of like memes and shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit ain't no game. M is mm-hmm. top dog for real. That's so interesting. Maybe it's like a generational thing because you see, I don't. I do know how old you. I know around how old you are. Mm. But I think that Eminem got his recognition with me at least when I was growing up. I feel like Eminem got a, like a lot of recognition, especially because he was a white rapper that was doing yeah, his thing yeah. amongst. In the hip hop culture, like mm. I feel like people gave him his props, but as music became more, I don't want to say accessible, but I'm using that for a lack of better words. Yeah, and yeah. more people started popping out. You yeah. have like a lot more white rappers nowadays. You have a lot more people just like making different kinds of music. Yeah. That's when I feel like his name started phasing out because he wasn't really doing that much to keep people's attention. Yeah, my yeah. my main, I don't know. I, not saying that that's facts. Yeah, you I don't know. feel free to correct me. <laughs> I mean, because he's still, like, what, number one on YouTube right now? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's been for a while. If not number one, at least top five. I know that for sure. See, I didn't know that. He yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. He been, he been up so there So why you feel while. like he's not getting his props? He's, he's Yeah, top that's five. why I said a numbers show. But, like, even my homeboys be like, man, I don't want to listen to no fucking Eminem. I be like, what? Like, you wild. When was the last time you listened to Eminem? I listen to Eminem every day. I play Superman every day. Cause <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. like, come on. Okay. All right. All right. So that was just a quick little. Okay. So that was your first memory. So do you feel mm. like um, the music that you listened to growing up influenced your sound? Or do you feel like the music that you listened to as you tapped into your artistry is what? Helped you Kinda as out. I tapped into the artistry, like um, like I I like uh, of course I, I love the music that I grew up listening to, but I just love it because I love it. Like it didn't necessarily influence the way that I create or make my music at all. It wasn't until I got into, like, you know, high school, freshman year of high school, I really started tapping into artists that I wanted to have influence my music. But I ain't gonna lie, I've always been a fan of Nas and Nas when it comes to me. Um, trying to story tell, mm-hmm. it always Nas helps to really yeah. Guy, it always yeah. helps to try to think what what will Nas do right now? Mm-hmm. What will Nas say? So yeah. Okay, so who was so Nas is one of your um, inspirations from growing up? But who would you say like is like a current one? Somebody that you were looking or people who you were looking to as you were developing your artistry that you were like taking notes from? Drake, okay. Wayne, Boogie, Trey songs probably on top. Four. All of those make sense. Yeah, yeah. All of those make sense um, content-wise, I guess, like lyrically. Because yeah. um, one thing I was saying to my friend about you was I feel like you really been tapping into your like certified lover boy bag. Yeah. Um, not even in terms of like the album, just name. Yeah. Like it very much gives like who hurt you. Right. But like yeah. <laughs> it's really right. like, dang, you you tapped into your emotions though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that all the people that you just named, it definitely gives that um lyrically. Sound wise, mm-hmm. is there anybody that you were listening to that you felt like you wanted to emulate, not like replicate replicate, um, but damn, what's your boy name, man? Fuck. Forgot his name. I got a couple names on mine, but I don't know if they're going to be the best. Um, Rich Homie Quan for sure. I feel like he another one that don't get enough credit. Rich he definitely homie. doesn't. Yeah. I will definitely agree with you yeah, on that Yeah, as far one. as my sound, like when I go into my trap lane, I try to think about like Rich Homie. But like when I'm singing, singing, it's definitely The weekend and Trey songs, like as far as like the sound. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's your inspiration yeah. or like your people. Who are people that people tell you that you sound like? Man, I didn't have, I didn't have, real shit, I didn't have people tell me I sound like Michael Jackson on God. I didn't really? have people say, hell I mean, that's yeah, a, that's uh, not a compliment. Uh, The Weeknd, for sure, mm-hmm. and I hear a lot of Drake, too, but yeah, that's- that surprised me. I heard that this week, actually, somebody said that shit, and I didn't heard it before, like, damn, but yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. Tory Lanez, too. Like, I definitely, like I definitely heard Tory. You know, I heard Tory in, um... Louisiana. Yeah. I heard Tory in Louisiana and I heard um P 
PNB a little bit. Okay. In oh yeah. I also damn. heard PNB and Y Man, too. R I P PNB. I forgot. R I P PNB. I forgot about PNB. He was heavy. You definitely gave me PNB. He was heavy in the phone. Like when I first started making my videos, like before I popped making actual records, you know, I was making videos. Mm -hmm. Like I was mimicking PNB for real, because that's how I found PNB making videos, being on cars. And okay, shit, like, that you know makes a lot of sense. Because I was like, I have somebody in mind, but I want to see if yeah, you're gonna oh, say that's man, exactly yeah. who I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, Another yeah. one is Raw Wave. I don't know if people tell you that. Nah, yeah, I've, I've gotten that before. I've gotten that. I've before. seen that in your comments. Yeah, I've gotten that before. I don't, I've gotten that before. I don't think it's the sound as much as it is like the pain. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe it's just the soul that I put behind that. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I now, how do you too. feel though when people compare sounds from like one artist to another? Do you think that that hurts? Do you think it helps? Do you think like what do you think? I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times they'll say. It, in a negative light but you know if it's positive it's cool mm -hmm. but if if you got somebody saying oh you just trying to sound like blah 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 like you think i'm sitting here studying this man trying right. to sound like this person like nah music is music so but again if they say it in a positive light it's all good i don't mm -hmm. really trip about it like the other day um rico beats the producer he came here and he was telling me a story i think i know rico Okay, shout out yeah. to Rico. Yes, yeah. he was he was here the other day. He was Pop Smoke's manager and he's a producer. Um, and he was telling me a story about him getting a song thinking it was future. He thought the future had hopped on one of his tracks, and then like he was hyped. He was like, Oh, I got future oh, on man. one of my tracks. And then he later on found out that it was designer. And oh, I don't know if you remember. See, that's not bad though, but shit. So I and I was gonna say like when Designer first came out, that was something that a lot of people were saying like, oh, he sounds like Future, but yeah. it got the buzz going. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. like it was like I don't want to say it was because he sounded like him because obviously the song was good, the song was about, yeah. but it was that like talk about yeah. how he sounded and who he sounded like so, that so got his name. I guess in him. that sense, all publicity is good publicity. You know, it depends what I'm saying? on but, how but, you work it. And yeah, how you, yeah, exactly. How you look at I never got that from uh, designer though that he sound like Future. Really? Uh, no. Yeah, uh, Not even with Panda. Uh, uh, that's crazy. We gonna run it back after we <laughs> after we shoot right. this. We gonna we see. So. um... Well, um, I know that a big start to your career was also freestyling, specifically a video that went viral mm -hmm. that was recorded of you in school. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about how that came about mm -hmm. and then what happened after. Yeah, so I started those videos in my room, like, you know what I'm saying? Before I took, because the one that blew up, I was, in, I was at school, mm -hmm. you know, that was during PE, but I started in my room, just me and my cousin and shit like that, but... See what happened was that I was I started in my room during the summer, but then I started going to school and I'm like I don't got time to do these videos like mm. during the day anymore. I'm getting I'm getting home from school. I got to do homework. I eat then I go to sleep. So I'm like man, I need to figure out a way to keep making these videos. So I'm like shit, we just gonna do them when we got free time in gym. Right. Did it at the gym. I did like two of them and then the third one took off mm. and. uh that prior, I mean, that next day when I went to school, that's how I knew that it took over. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't big on social media at that time. Like I'd post, throw my phone down, go to sleep, whatever. I didn't really care about it. But yeah, I went to school the next day, and everybody was just all in my face. I was like, oh, that is shit crazy. It took over the school for real for like a week. That's all niggas was talking about mm -hmm. for real. So was this like uh, you were already popular and people were just like coming up Hell to you? Or was no, nah, I was not. Oh, so that's different. Yeah, no, nah, I was not popular at all. Like I wasn't. I wasn't like a lamb or no shit like that, but I was quiet. I stayed in my own lane. I had my own little bubble mm -hmm. of guys and shit like that. But no, I, was, I wasn't popular at all. Ain't nobody really getting up about no RJ for real. What? So, yeah. okay, so you went from RJ the student to artist to RJ the artist. Yeah, in everybody want to like hop on the song. Niggas walking up to me, freestyling to me like I'm about to sign y'all. Shit, I'm like, nigga, what? Yeah, thanks. Okay, well, that's oh, how was that, though? Was it exciting? Was it like... I mean, yeah, because, you know, when I was young, I always envisioned just being a superstar. So that was okay. just like my superstar So this was in the plan already. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast, okay. I've seen it coming. So after that, when was like the first time that you like made an official song? It, was, it wasn't too long after that. Um... Cause I, cause I knew right away. Everybody was telling me like, man, you gotta make that into an official song, like a real song. And I had never been in a studio before, so I just hit up one of the homies like, yo, you know anybody who got a studio? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, my homeboy got one in the hood. So I took, I, I really left because my mom, I was sixteen. My mom didn't want me to leave the neighborhood. This nigga stayed like thirty minutes away on a bike, forty minutes away the hood. 
So I told my mom I was going up the street, went road over there, pulled up to the crib. I'm thinking I'm about to see like a crazy studio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I never seen one before, only on the TVs. He had me right in the closet it recording was, that yep. shit. <laughs> with the That's how it be. That's yeah. the true come up. He had okay. me right in the closet. So I did that, but I only had one verse on it. So he was like, man, the song's too short, man. You don't want to extend it. I'm trying to come up with a verse. He like, man, let me just hop on it. And it's my brother to this day. He hopped on it. And then that record just took off. Like, it just took off like 100K mm. in just some weeks. And for me, at the time, that was crazy. Like, I wasn't seeing nothing I like mean, that. I mean, people are not even seeing 100K now. Honestly. You see what I'm saying? So, so it's still, that's a big deal. Yeah, at, the, at that point, I just knew, like, I got something. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's so interesting. So... When when did that segue into you dropping music consistently, like to gain yeah. more people's attention? Like when when did that happen? Well, I I we did the record, mm -hmm. and then I but I knew that like I wanted to do bigger things. Like I knew I didn't want to stay in that closet. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mind, but I but I had an envision of my sound and what I wanted. How I just wanted shit to go. Mm -hmm. So I just I just we we just started reaching out to people. You know what I'm saying? Seeing who could get me in the studio, seeing who could get me around good producers and stuff like that. And then uh, I ran into an OG in my in my city mm -hmm. uh, by the name of Marcelo, and he. That's when yeah I started to see the real studios I started to see what it really feel like and what it's really like being an artist and what, what recording is you know really like and working and shit like that and once I got into that workflow it was over I knew that I wanted to drop a tape I knew that I wanted to you know get features I knew that I wanted to just do everything mm -hmm. start making money off the music like I wanted to tap into everything okay so you said you knew that you wanted to get features so yeah. who what were like your dream collabs when you were first getting into the industry Somebody who I got on my album right now is a dream collab. And, and I know everybody don't even know him, like, even from my city. But he was somebody I listened to and was a fan of, Holly Grove King. Okay. You know, he's he from the city and shit. I always wanted to work with him. So it was full circle getting him on the album now. So that was one. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do one, a song with BTY, who's also from the city. But he passed away, unfortunately. Young Greatness as well. But then he passed away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I was really thinking a lot local when I first started. Like, I needed to get songs in with these guys before I could branch out mm -hmm. to the world. And when you say your city, you're talking about Louisiana. Yeah, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. So how would you describe the New Orleans sound? Because I saw an article about you that said like the new sound of no love. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that that was so interesting because when I think about New Orleans music, I think about like the bo the bounce music. Yeah, the bounce music. Like, um, I don't know if I've ever really tapped into like the R and B melodic rap sound from yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. So if you had to describe that sound, how would you describe it? New Orleans as a whole, or just that? I guess like, how would you describe the New Orleans sound? The new New Orleans sound. I mean, everything's still bounce heavy. Everything's still bounce heavy. I ain't gonna lie. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of drilling type of rap going on in New Orleans. But we got our R and B singers too. You know, Ombre is from New Orleans. She's also mm. signed to rock. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Lucky came out of New Orleans. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, yeah, he came out of New Orleans. So, and that and he's incredible. So yeah, yeah and then and then there's me. You know what I'm saying? Coming with the R and B sound and with the rap shit. So. I mean, yeah, so far that's what I'm hearing, but it's still a lot of bounce. It's bounce heavy. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. Would you do like a bounce song? I, I got a, I got one. You do? Yeah. Wait, which one? Louisiana. That's about, that's considered bounce. I, oh. Black because Black and Mild is, is who produced it or co-produced it. That's so crazy because I literally was just talking about Louisiana. I didn't even think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. that's a bounce. And then they also took First Time Loving and put that on the radio with a bounce beat behind it. So technically, you know. They put it on the radio with a bounce beat behind it, but it yeah. wasn't recorded with one. Nah, nah, nah. Which so, one do you like better? Oh, sorry, because you were about to tell me. <laughs> Go ahead and tell nah, your story I like, first. Uh, I like Louisiana because it, it was recorded that way, you know, purposely to put out in a bounce way for sure but i got a couple more records that's bouncing the tuck i'll be yeah oh in the tuck because i was like yeah i got you for okay. the city you got to like for real okay 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 mm -hmm. so if it wasn't music i mean you said you already knew you were going to be a superstar mm -hmm. so you were already manifesting that from early did you know it was going to be music or did you just know nah, that I, knew, you... I knew it was going to be music okay Either this or basketball, but every, every nigga from the hood got hoop Everybody dreams. got yeah, yeah I I, but <laughs> nah. <laughs> Wait, but were you playing basketball in school for you to even have hoop nah, dreams? Yeah, nah. like because you just said I wanted to though. I tried out. I just didn't make the team. Damn. Yeah. I mean, but it wasn't meant to happen. Everything is for a reason. Yeah, that's what they say. You know? No, no, I believe that. I really believe that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you know, I think that, like I said earlier, your sound 
has changed over time. I think that you're also very versatile, which is clear from just the conversation we've been having already. If you had to describe your sound, though, how would you describe it? Uh, it's melodic, heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's very spacious. The the sound is, you know, the quality of it is is, is crazy. Um, but it ranges. It's 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 very versatile. Mm -hmm. That's really the main word. It's just very versatile. Cause I do a lot of singing, but you know, I can also rap too. Yeah. very well. So. I like that you make music for everybody. Like yeah. I feel like there's a song that everybody can relate to, no matter like what kind of music they make yeah. or what kind of music they yeah. listen. And that's to. really what I aim to do. Like just tell as many stories to try to reach and touch as many people as i possibly mm -hmm. can that's what it's all about mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm an r&b girl so i really really love r&b i love melodic music um but you're on the radar freestyle you ate that up thank you you did that it was like <laughs> thank you so much five minutes long yeah, yeah. you was in your bag you yeah. was talking your shit yeah. and it really like four people that probably are more inclined to listen to like your r&b music it was like oh but let me remind y'all just in case you forgot yeah that, yeah I do this facts too. i gotta drop by uh by gay barry once in a while and let y'all know what i could do you, know you did that saying? that was really really good yeah, sure. um so let's get into you signing and your signing process mm -hmm. um i know that or at least i think i know mm -hmm. that you were going to sign to hybrid at one point yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay, at one point, and yeah. you didn't, um, mm -hmm. and then you wound up signing. So what came first in terms of you signing? Did Rock Nation come first? Did Young Boy come first? NBA. Okay, yeah, that's that what I thought. that was first, okay. yeah, through, through Fee Banks, that was first. Okay, that's, okay, that's what yeah. I was thinking. All right, so talk us through that, and then I'll give you my follow-up question. So how did yeah. you get connected with NBA? So to like, clear the record, though, I, I don't think I was necessarily ever like supposed to sign with high bridge it was just more so like let's let's take this kid let's bring him around let's you know what i'm saying take a chance um for whatever reason it didn't work out but i, I just don't want that air out there like you know what i'm saying they didn't want it like you know like it's bad blood or anything like that you know it just oh, didn't, it just i didn't, didn't think about out. it that way i just yeah. thought maybe things just didn't yeah, work nah, out but the fans be like yeah like what's That's going true. on you know yeah, nah, it wasn't yeah. like that it just didn't work out like that like mm -hmm. you said everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. so started working with fee you know my mom told me i couldn't sign to him when i was 17 but he stayed like working with me like he ain't just be like all right but like you know what i'm saying he stayed working with me watching the grind and once i hit 18 i really locked in with him that's when he introduced me to yb yb like the sound and we just we just made it happen so what was that what did that decision process look like? Because I think that there have been times that I've spoken to artists that sign other artists and I'll ask them, like, yeah. what was it that made you want to sign an artist, you know, being that you're still working on your career, you yeah. know, yourself? But now from the opposite perspective, I'm curious to know, as an artist, what makes you think that, like, this is a good move for me to sign yeah. to another artist? What was it that so, did for you? So, like, you know... I was working with A. I was, I was, I was like being. He basically mentored me for like two years. Mm -hmm. I'm on the road with him, and you know, in the back of my mind, I did think, you know, I was gonna sign to him and shit like that. And we was doing a bunch of stuff, you know, what I'm saying, and then in that way, so I had already knew what it was like to be under an artist down there. You know, what I'm saying, I already mm -hmm. knew what that felt like and shit like that. So when the time came to have a sit down with YB, you know, I, all of that played in the back of my mind. Like, damn, I just was with this dude. We just thought all this wasted, you know, all mm -hmm. this, I'm thinking this, and it didn't happen the way. So mm -hmm. when I sat down with YB, I had to really reflect and think about that shit like, damn, is it going, but I don't know. So I'm just, so I'm just said, go, you know, go for it. Just do okay. it. You know what I'm saying? I felt like it was the best thing uh, for my career at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, and not to mention that he's, you know, he's from where I'm from too. Mm -hmm. So it made a lot more sense, you know, a NOLA artist signing to a, Somebody from, you know, Louisiana rather than me signing, you know, but um, I think, I think, I guess everything just happened for a reason and it just made the most sense and it's been, it's been good so far. It's I know. Really okay. That's, well, that's good that you're happy with your decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that um, you went on tour with No Cap mm -hmm. um, and that came, that was by way of you being yeah, signed. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was that experience? How was that going on? Man, tour? that was crazy. That was, a fr that was, that was my first tour. Facts. Like, mm -hmm. Um, well, performing. I went on tour with A, but I ain't never get to perform. I just right. seen him. 
So being on stage in front of uh, all them people, it just was crazy. But it was hella fun. I got so much love that I ain't think. Cause you know when you doing you you doing music and you seeing the comments is different from you doing the music and you getting to see the actual yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? Shake hands, give hugs. You know what I'm saying? So it was incredible. I can't wait to get back on the road for real. It was tiring, but it was crazy fun. So what was like that first performance like for you when you went on tour? Like the very first time you stepped on stage, saw all of the people out there. Yeah. What was going through your mind? <laughs> like, what did you what did you have to do to prepare for that? We was uh, we was in Dallas that night for the first night, um, and then on the way to the performance and shit, I'm just on YouTube trying to say like, what do I say when I first go on stage? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, and before I perform, I was like, all right, if I fuck up, I'ma just in case I fuck up at the beginning, I'ma just say, yo, like this is my first time being on stage in a while. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I put a YouTube video on. The first thing the nigga say is, don't say that this is your first time doing yeah. this shit. You know what I'm saying? But I was definitely nervous. I had butterflies in my stomach and shit. But man, once they say coming to the stage, all right, like all that shit gotta go. And mm-hmm. you just turn up. And yeah, I just turned up. But it was cool though to see like every show, I just got better and better and better and get more comfortable with the crowd and shit. And yeah, by the time we made it to Cincinnati, it was over with. You had <laughs> it in the bag. Yeah, you already was, knew how it was, was going crazy. So I feel like you kind of answered this already, but what do you like better, recording or performing live? I think performing. Yeah, I, I was like, just from the way that you were <laughs> yeah, like saying I that, I figured that was going to be it your response. Be crazy. Okay, yeah. so of course, when you outside, you know, um, especially as people get to know you a little bit more, get to know who you're around, mm-hmm. um, sometimes things don't always go the way that we would expect for them to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember hearing this in real time. I don't know if you want to talk about it, only if you're comfortable. But um, there was an incident with you and somebody shooting up your car. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel comfortable talking about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what exactly happened with that situation? Because there was like a whole lot of speculation about it. Um, So yeah, I'm gonna let you go ahead. I mean, to be honest, we we still don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like um, when this shit happened, I I really felt like it was just more so, I want to say I feel like it was more so just the wrong place, wrong on time type mm-hmm. of situation because after because you know i don't really be for nobody like that you know right. what i'm saying they got guys from the other side that you know we may not get along with but as far as me going back and forth on the internet doing like you don't really see me doing that so mm-hmm. it was a surprise but i can't say like i don't know i don't know what happened that night i know i was tripping though i was tri- i wasn't even i wasn't i was somewhere that i wasn't supposed to be in my city mm-hmm. everybody know you don't go in this area mm-hmm. and i was there just on some tripping shit i'm yeah, I was I was I was messed up at that time. I was going through a dark time. Um, yeah, and so okay, we about to get into that. Yeah. But um what so in that moment, um the way that I knew what I saw was you you went live after mm. to kind of like I guess tell people what was going on. Was that mm. more for like a safety reason? Was it just to make everybody aware? Yeah, it was it was more so safety and at the time of it at the time of me going live um, my mom was still just, of course, just so heavy and what the fuck just happened. And then I'm thinking too, like, I don't know if they about to sp- like spin back. Like, I don't know what's about to happen. Let right. me go on live and speak to y'all whether if this be my last time speaking to y'all like mm-hmm. type shit, you know what I'm saying? Just in case I got to do whatever. So that's really what that was. I just wanted to touch bases. I think that that was like, um, kind of like a walking testimony. I, I, one thing I've noticed about you is that you seem to be very like faith based. Mm-hmm. Um, and I truly believe that, like, God got, God had you in that situation. Yes, indeed. Um, even when you pan the camera and you showed, like, what it looked like, you yeah. know, things can go left like this. Yeah, so I, mean. I think that that was really, like, a for once to some, like, a wake-up call yeah. to you. You said you knew you weren't where you were supposed to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that was a moment that you could take from and learn from. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I, I didn't get hit one time. That shit is crazy. The only damage that I took was glass from the windshield cut out my leg up but i'm here mm-hmm. so i'm definitely blessed thank god for that yeah. um but did that change the way that you moved though like after that incident did you like start bringing more people with you to places did you watch where you were going was that a factor at all or no coming from where i come from you it's natural that you have your head on a swivel mm-hmm. that night 
I didn't. I was tripping. Mm-hmm. So, you know, of course, going forward, no matter where I'm at, I got my head on the swivel. But it more so changed me mentally. Mm-hmm. Like I said, during that time, I was going through a really dark, depressed, you know, moment of my life. And it wasn't because no particular reason other than the fact that I just felt like I could be doing more. I don't know. It just I was I was at the edge. Like, I really just didn't want to do anything no more. I felt hopeless. And so, you know, started contemplating some real dark stuff. But uh, that moment just kind of taught me, like, I'm not in control of my life. Like, you know, it could be taken from me at any moment. So I need to be grateful and thankful for every second that I have. And that's kind of how I've been moving since the situation. Because before I wasn't moving like that, I wasn't right. appreciative of what all of these blessings that I got. I'm signed to a label. Like, I'm meeting this person, doing that person. So yeah. I just wasn't grateful. So I, I felt like that was God just, like, waking me up. Like, you got you like, you tripping. So I've been moving like that. Uh, I still I still don't really move with, like, too many people around me because I feel like that's that's damn near equivalent to, like, you know, the same shit could happen. That like, part, you know, somebody too. being too close to you, they know where you are. I don't know. I just... Don't, yeah, the only way i just been moving different, though, is just been moving in a much more positive and appreciative way. Mm-hmm. I think that... Um, I definitely received everything you said. Um, even from a personal standpoint, I feel like I can relate to a lot. I also just want to say, um, of course, I'm not um, taken away from what you're saying, but I think that gratefulness is very subjective because you may say that you weren't grateful in the time but sometimes we're just really not aware of like all the blessings or like all of the things that we have going on so it's not coming from a place of i'm not grateful because i don't have it it's just like i'm not stopping to even think about what i have i'm thinking about what i'm lacking more than anything so i just i don't want you to feel like oh you know like i wasn't grateful enough and i wasn't it's like maybe you just weren't in headspace to really appreciate all that was happening at in the moment so mental health check-in yeah on a scale from one to ten how you feeling i'm good you good yeah yeah this hour i'm about to drop I feel good. Very, very happy yeah. to hear that. So yeah. I know we were just talking about, you know, we were working through a very dark time. Mm. Um, what kind of things did you turn to to get yourself to where you are now, where you were very, very good and you back to working? Um, I think, and it's crazy too, that before that moment happened, I had just like, because I, I had got, it's random, but I had got tired of going to like studios. Like I wasn't catching vibes. Like I just, it was weird. And that kind of fucked with my sadness too. So I had went out and I spent a good grip on studio equipment and I had put it in the house mm-hmm. and I had it just sitting there. Like I wasn't, I wasn't motivated. Yeah. I was too in a dark headspace to even fuck with. I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So when that situation happened, I just like, man, I feel like recording some music. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I just got on it, learned how to mix and master, record myself, all that type of shit. And doing that every day gave me something to go for. Mm-hmm. Like it gave, it gave me peace. It brought me happiness. You know what I'm saying? I just start creating more and more music. Doing something that I love anyway, something right. that I knew I should have been doing anyway. Um, and that's what really took me out of it. So would you say that music is like your therapy? Hell yeah, 100%. Whether I'm listening to it or doing it, whatever music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it was interesting like I heard you talking in one of your interviews about um, I think it was with Gabe actually where you were saying that you'll go to the studio but you don't necessarily write like you'll just freestyle yeah, yeah. do you still do that yeah yeah facts I still freestyle I, I love to freestyle um, cause writing I don't know but I've been getting back into writing more too cause I, I don't know I just feel like you gotta be in a certain mood if I hear a beat it's like crazy as hell and I know I gotta sit down and write I'm gonna sit mm-hmm. down and write but majority of the time I f- I just let it flow straight from... Okay. Well, I'm glad that you found your vice. I'm glad you found something that can make you happy and can get you out of that headspace because I know that there are a lot of people that feel the same way. And that's also why I didn't want to invalidate how you were feeling. But at the same time, you know, like I said, gratefulness a lot of times is very subjective when you're not in the headspace to like... It makes sense. I'm glad I could look at it that way too. Um, So now let's get into... You signing to Rock Nation. How did that come about? Um, we did the deal with YB, and I was working with YB for like, I don't even think it was six months before bigger labels started calling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fee I got in contact with another partner who put us in direct contact with Sherry, who's the president over at Rock. And uh, we hopped on a meeting with him. The conversation went swell everything made sense and we made the deal happen okay so what's the difference between what you have going on with yb and what you have going on with rock nation i guess what what yb it's a lot more distance so it's it's more so an affiliation you know we we work and what i do you know yb never 
that's my big brother. He never take take nothing from what I do or no shit like that. It's all mm. just been family oriented working. Um over here, it's more like we we really locked in, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Every day, day to day doing this and that. I don't really be with or well, I be speaking to him too much or doing too much over mm. there as much as I'm doing over here. Okay. Sure that's all it is. That's dope. Yeah. So how how did it feel though signing to like Rock Nation? Like, whoa, yeah. big deal. It still feels <laughs> how surreal. How was it? Yeah, real. like yeah. that's such a big yeah, a big thing. It to still be feels surreal, you know what I'm saying? Especially to be the first one in my family to do something like this. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I got a bunch of uncles that rap, like you know, my, my father rap. So mm-hmm. it's just surreal, for real. I'm so grateful. I'm still taking it all in. I'm sure ten years later I'll still be taking it all in. Well, I will give you a congratulations <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> just you. for that, because that that Thank is you. very big. Yeah. Um, do you have any collabs like with other Rock Nation artists that you would like to? Yeah, hell put yeah. Out there? Damn, now I love him right now. Really? Um, yeah, hell yeah. You don't go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Shout out HD, man. HD got hella records. Shout out Ruben from uh Charlotte. That's that's the guy. Is he from Charlotte? Y'all know? Yeah, he's from Charlotte. Yeah, shout out Ruben. Shout out Charlotte. So yeah, me and him got records. Tyree is another Rock Nation artist. That's like my brother for real. We got mm-hmm. records. Um, Kaylin is another oh, okay. author in LA. Like yeah. He's from Cali, yeah. Yeah, we, we did some Shout joints. Shout Kaylin. I really um, like his music, so too. So, yeah, we, I'm trying to lock in with everybody for real. What Trying about Cash too. Page? I really, really like her music. Oh, yeah, I feel we like tapped I was in. Sound... I seen her at the 4040 last year um, for an event that Jay threw. Okay, because um, I was we, like, I feel like y'all was Yeah, we tapped really in. She fucked with the sound and shit. I told her I fucked with her. I got a number. I'm going to hit her. We're going we gonna to lock in and do something. Yeah, shout out to Cash Page. I yeah. like I like her music, too, and I feel like y'all she's sounds dope. would work very well yeah, together. Yeah, and she signs to Rock Nation. Yeah, yeah, she's dope as hell. She probably was there tonight. I just didn't even see her at the 4040. Oh, that was tonight. Oh, yeah, we had. Okay, it was like. Nah, it was a. Yeah, so I had this one. I'm a little out. Sorry, y'all. I don't know what's going on. So, um, how are your relationships though, like with artists? Do you have like artist friends, or is it like yeah, business? Yeah, yeah, I got some friends for sure. Okay. Not not everyone you see me shaking hands with my friends. But, oh no, but, I would never assume that. Not even just for you, but nah, for anybody. Nah, but but yeah, I got some friends. Like I said, the, the the guys that I just named, like we're really really cool. I'm glad I have that relationship with them, especially with them being on the label. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah. so. I want to get into something with you real quick. What's up? Um, you have posted something on social media mm-hmm. about another R and B artist, and you <laughs> you said <laughs> "f that crap." <laughs> yeah. And I won't say who it is if you don't want me to, because I don't know where y'all <laughs> stand in y'all relationship right now. <laughs> Man, listen, bro. I just. That whole situation, I just don't do the fake celebrity shit. Like, I'm a human being. Like, I don't know. Man. Okay. All right. So, my first question is, can I say the name or no? Yeah. All right. So, it was about Jacquees. And um, it was very random to me because I feel like I don't really be seeing him in no drama. I don't really be seeing you in no drama. Yeah. So, it was like, what the hell happened? And then I didn't see any response. And then I didn't see any follow-up from your end. So, I'm like, what? you can't just say a statement like that. Man, and nah, I have nah. people <laughs> wondering what's, what was going on nah, at the time. I stand on what I said, man. I just don't do that weird shit. So, what happened was mm-hmm. I seen him at the Rock Nation brunch. They invited me to go. That was earlier this year. So, I seen him. Not only did I see him... Cause to get to to even get to where the actual brunch is, you mm-hmm. gotta take a like a bus to get up there, like to, at a loading dock or some shit. So mm-hmm. we all there, and it's a bunch of celebrities. You know what I'm saying? But he's doing he's like close to me. I shake hands with him. We chop it up. You know, we take pictures. Ah ah, shit was cool. We mm-hmm. get to the brunch. I see him there. We chop it up. It's cool. A week later, I'm back home, but I'm about to fly back to LA again. Mm-hmm. I just so happened to run into this nigga at the airport at MSY. Mm-hmm. So I see him and he, like people not crowding him. Like it's not like crazy in there. Everybody moving, doing what they got. They probably got like one or two people trying to take a picture with this nigga. Mm-hmm. Um, he so happened to cross my path. Um, so when I see him, I don't, I don't immediately say something because I'm, I'm waiting for, you know, that eye contact. Right. We make that eye contact. And then that's when I know, oh, he acknowledges me. He remember me. Like, what's up? So as soon as we make that eye contact, I'm like, what's up, bro? That nigga look at me. That nigga keep walking. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, that's weird. That's like, weird. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. Like, you know, I'm a human being. Like, I don't do that shit. Like, and then if you could give attention to these people. 
Even if you were like giving him the benefit of the doubt, even if he didn't recognize you right away, he could at least acknowledge like, my presence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I so, see. so my fuck Jacquees ain't even coming from an artist standpoint. It's coming from a human to human standpoint. Mm. Like you not. Like no, nigga, you a human See? just like me, nigga. You put your pants on, <laughs> two legs, two. You know what I'm saying? At a time, just like me, nigga. Uh-huh. What the fuck? Like no, nah, I'm not so doing that. happy that you were able to clear. Thank you for clearing it up. Yeah, I'm happy bro. that you did because me, I'm an overthinker. I'm like created all of these scenarios in my head. You said crab. I'm thinking Nicki Minaj. She said bitches like crabs in a bucket. You see a bad oh, bitch nah, nah, trying to That's some crab I'm shit. I'm like maybe real. he I, did something like. I never do that. I okay. Never do that. I don't so, care. So okay, so let's say from an artist standpoint. Rolls in reverse, you at the airport, you know, you just, you either just came off a long flight or you about to get on one, you know, we had a long day. And people coming up to you asking for pictures, asking you to talk. Like, are you always going to give pictures? Are you always going to talk? Hell yeah. I am a public figure. I signed up for this. Okay. Because you know, there are people, not even this situation aside, there are artists and just celebrities in general that are like, you know, respect my time. Respect me yeah, as a all, person. That's all cool. But if I'm seeing that you conversating with other people and I see that we make eye contact, I'm not just going to disrespect you or nothing like that. Because like, as a man, that's like, damn, that disrespect. If we know each other and you see me and you don't say nothing, I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm charismatic. I'm right. going to be that person. My mom always say something, speak up. I'm going to mm-hmm. be that person. So I just, what's yeah. up, bro? No, I feel that. What's, what's good, bro? How you been? And the nigga just like, come on, bro, nah. Yeah, walk, to walk away is crazy. Not yeah. even like, oh, yo, you know, yeah, bro, not bro, even. It's been nothing. a long day, like, you know. Yeah. I it's catch all you. It's good. I let him have it. Fuck um, that have you seen him since? Nah, I haven't seen him. Okay. So we're going to leave that where it's at. Um, so something else. On your Instagram, you said, I don't fit in. On your on your Instagram name, that's yeah. literally what it says. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I was more so speaking about this right here. Like, I think when I first signed to to YB, a lot of the people from my hometown didn't respect it. Just because, like, a lot of them did, but a lot of them didn't because they were like, what is he doing with this crowd? These guys rap mm-hmm. about this and this and this and that. And, like, what are they doing trying to sign this guy who's singing about women? You know what I mean? Like, it just don't make sense. So, yeah. for a while, that was like... I felt like that was my downfall. Like, damn, like, man, I got to rap like these guys to fit in. Like, I got to blah, 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 blah. But it came to a certain point where I'm like, man, I'm fucking awesome. Like, yeah. I got some shit that niggas don't have. And I like that I don't fit in. Why would I want to fit in? And you know, while you were saying that, I was looking, like, kind of confused a little bit because I wasn't expecting for you to say that they didn't respect it. If anything, it's like I stood out enough that they wanted to put me. Nah, they they didn't respect it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they was on some shit like, he going to sit up here with these guys that rap about this and struggle about this. But he wasn't struggling or whatever because mom, like we grew up in poor conditions, but... By the time I got a little older, my mama made it a little better for us. She moved okay, us. Okay, but you were still like, I feel like struggle is so subjective. Like, yeah. let's not act like you was not living in your car. You had, yeah, you had like, you struggle know too. Like, that's, I that, feel like people, people don't always want to compare shit. struggles. Yeah, and it like, does not, it never needs to give that. Talent is talent. Exactly. And I feel like any good label or like even artists, if you want to have people under you, you don't want everybody to have the same sound. Exactly, yeah. So, so that, yeah, that I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, hmm, this is a little interesting, like, yeah. giving everybody... But mm-hmm. it wasn't like a, I'm not going to respect it or anything. It was like, huh, what does he bring to the table that would make him be the standalone right. person, like the right. standalone R&B person yeah. or whatever in this exactly. situation? Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Lil Wayne, when, you know, when he was creating... Why I'm saying B, he didn't sign a bunch of Lil Wayne's. You know, he got Drake, right. he got Nicki, he got Euro, he got, you know what I'm saying? They're mm-hmm. all different type of artists that, you know, step in a different type of lane. So I think uh, investing in me was one of the smartest moves, for real, because I just, I don't fit in. So do you feel like you've had your, like, I made it moment yet? Nah, not until I sell out my first show. First sell out arena. your first show. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk hypothetic- hypothetically speaking with this show. What would like your dream <clears throat> lineup be? So obviously you would be the main act, mm. you the headliner, but who would you want to like open for you, and who else would you want to perform? Damn, um, I definitely want. I think I think I want. I think I want YB to open for real. He gonna he gonna have him going crazy. <laughs> um, okay. And then. Uh, I definitely want Boogie to be a following record. Because, you know, I got him on some records, so it would be crazy. Like, if I'm out here or whatever, I just bring him out. That shit would be nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm from New Orleans, so if I could if I could bring Wayne out, 
Like that would be epic. Like that's it. Okay, I you did got it. a star um, set Atlanta. Yeah. Love that for you. <laughs> so, but you're not gonna have anybody opening like upcoming or upcoming artists, people that like people don't know. Like the same way, like not saying people didn't know you, but yeah. I'm sure that when you went on tour, everybody wasn't familiar with okay, who you okay. were. But that gave okay. me an opportunity to get your nah, name. Nah, nah, yeah, because I'm thinking like who would you? Yeah, big, no, big, okay, who okay. would you put on tour with you that doesn't necessarily have a name out there? Across the country or across the world, but you think they deserve to be heard. Four AM, he's on my album. Mm. I think he's from Memphis, but he's he's home, he's in my hometown right now. He's fire, like he's okay. He's crazy fire. I definitely have him open for me because the world need to hear him. Like he's crazy. Shout out Four AM. Yeah, shout out Four AM. Um, I'm trying to think. My homeboy Bang, he's like my hype man. Man, it's crazy, bro. He gonna turn this show up for show. Sure. I probably have it. I probably have him open too, for real. Should be crazy. Um, what kind have, of like having Rob? Having Rob, that'd be crazy too. Rob for now, he's from my city. He going okay, crazy, okay. Right? This 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 is giving. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what it's giving yet, but it's giving something. Yeah, this yeah, is like yeah, it's yeah, something for everybody. I don't know if I'm getting the order right or how I want niggas to, you know. That, but and that's okay because yeah, we're hypothetically speaking. Yeah, he will definitely he will definitely have to pop out for me though. For okay. Sure. That's fire. So yeah. what do you think, like, if, if somebody were to go to a show of yours, because obviously the shows are coming because the project is coming, so yeah. I can only assume the show is going to follow. Yeah. What would your show give? Like, if I went to an RJ concert, like, what kind of vibe what should I be expected to, like, get into? Expect to be in your feels, for real. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna touch some bases. We're going to talk about some things that, that may be uncomfortable to talk about. But mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to talk about it. We're going to. Yeah, I'm gonna give y'all some stories. So just just expect to to be open to hear some things. For okay. Real. Yeah. Okay. Survive. So, speaking of getting your feels, have you ever gotten your heart broken before? Plenty of times. Plenty. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you to say that. Plenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Do you want to talk about one or no? I mean, I'm not you, gonna give you the option or no. I mean, which okay. One let's talk about? about one. Um. Is there anybody that you? Okay. Why? Let's start off with that. Was that inspired by any of your real life situations? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that one. Because that one had me like, damn. Yeah. You, you said a lot of heavy, heavy things in that song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talking about ending it all. Yeah. Talking about yeah. not being able to feel anything. Yeah. Heartbroken, but still praying for somebody. Yeah. How, what was that situation? What did that look like? messy i've been through man i've been through all type of emotions like you can go through for real like to where it's like i've been so heartbroken i don't know where to turn and i and i go to you know i had a drug addiction that i just got over like and that all stemmed from me being in a relationship that was so damn toxic and was it just caused so much pain i didn't know how to deal with it um so yeah i, I was definitely on drugs heavy just <laughs> going crazy um you know having me that 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 night that I that I got shot at, it was because of I ain't gonna speak too much on it, but it had something to do with the fact that I was in a relationship that had me so messed up in the head, mm -hmm. had me acting out of character. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you can't let nobody take you, and I know you know this now. Yeah, but yeah, no, can no. I let? And it's so tricky sometimes because you don't even feel it happening. Yeah, I know. You just you sit back, back and like, damn, yeah. like what? The? And that's when you know, yeah. like you know what's going on, but in real time, it's oh, like man. you don't even see. Like this is not me. Yeah, no, nah, you don't even see it. Well, so I've been I, blinded. I also yeah. want to say, um, congratulations on getting over your addiction. Thank you so much. Um, because that's really big, yeah, and a lot you. of people don't always make it out of that. So, yeah. congratulations to you for that. Thank you so much. Um, but wow, so that inspired why? Yeah. Um, does that situation kind of like? I don't know. Like, do you use that to navigate your situations now, move, moving forward? Nah, man. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm a pretty hard headed lover. Like, it take oh, it damn. take a lot of time for me to get my heart broken to like learn a lesson. Like, oh, I'm tripping. Like, it take a lot of heartbreak. Nah, because so. you really a certified lover boy. Wow. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but I just know. Okay, I'm but hard -headed. you know what else? So. Um, in the conversations about like R&B, I know you're not just like an R&B artist, but yeah. in the conversations about R&B being dead, when Diddy was talking about it, he said that he felt like there was like a vulnerability that was lacking from the music that we get now. And I think that those situations and those like real life experiences are what help 
give that feeling where you could actually listen yeah. to a song and actually feel something from it. Yeah, like, yeah, damn, let me sure. run that back. Cause like I listen, but now like, let me hear what he's saying. Cause yeah, it's like, you sure. feel like what you're going through. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good that you use that for your music. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, but I think that some would say that that's what we're lacking. So, However many times you gotta get your heart broken. <laughs> that's what they say to A Boogie too. Like get your heart broken again. Oh, yeah, like we like, people the really be plotting yeah. on A Boogie's that's love crazy, downfall man. just so that we can get some. Shout like, out A Boogie, man. In my bad music. <laughs> Shout out to A Boogie. I would never root for anybody to get their heart broken, but know. his best songs do come from what he's going through with with my girl Ella. Yeah, so um that's that's typically how it be. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so how what's your love life looking like right now, RJ? Like are you dating? Are you working? What you doing? I'm single. Yeah, screw up. But I'm working though. I'm definitely working. I, okay. I, I barely have the time these days. But yeah, I'm definitely big single. Big single. <laughs> All right. If y'all want to, okay, right. big single. Um, and then what is it that you look for? Like, okay, no. First, have you changed your preferences? A lot of people when they get like names for themselves they only talk to like you know the ladies with the blue checks or oh, like nah, influencers nah, nah. I, ain't, I ain't doing that no nah, i like i don't know I'm, I, yeah, I'm a human being i don't look at all that blue checks and all that no nah. okay yeah i just like you for who you are yeah type situation okay mm -hmm. okay so now what do you do for fun like what are things like outside of music i feel like we like talked a lot about the music yeah. what do you do like let's say you have a free day you don't got to go to the studio you don't got to do nothing what's on the agenda i'm gonna work out for sure i gotta start my day with a workout i'm actually okay. i actually i'm actually in a boxing now so i'm gonna I'm okay a I'm gonna do that for sure. A get lot of people get into boxing, like yeah, artists, like Blueface. It's the best way to me. exercise, for real. I swear, it's the it's the best way. Okay. See, I'm gonna work out. Um, probably spend time with my family since I don't get to see them as much as I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna cook because I love to cook. That's fun okay. to me. Yeah, I like to cook, so I probably cook. Um, what's your favorite thing to cook? I like. I like red sauce a lot. I'm big on red sauce. I ain't gonna lie. So that must be a nor. Wait, red sauce? Yeah, just like tomato sauce. Like you oh, know what I'm saying? I'm so, like, that so I, I, like nah, I'm, I like spaghetti. Thing. Like spaghetti always been my like, okay. my favorite go to. But I make spaghetti and meatballs. Like that's that's my go to. Okay, okay, I'm okay, okay. Trying okay. to get their grub on at the crib. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So you cooking? You boxing? You working out? Yeah. All right, that sounds good. So now, yeah. let's bring it back. We got remember that mm -hmm. coming out. Friday. The second. Yeah. June second. Mm -hmm. Um, what else can we look forward to? You're the problem. That yeah. that is so crazy. <laughs> You're yeah. the problem. Yeah. Um, just based on your situation, I'm not gonna say too much, but the the title definitely gives a lack of accountability. But I won't say that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that for you. Yeah. Um, is that about one of your that title was inspired by one of your situations too? Yeah, yeah. That situation. It was Damn. Like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Wait, so when you make music about like your past situations do they know hell yeah they know <laughs> i heard your little song or whatever that's what they say. No. <laughs> <laughs> i heard your little song or whatever <laughs> and what do you be saying back like do you are you like a nose a general statement or are you a like, yeah that was about you nah yeah that was about you oh yeah, damn fact, cool. i see yeah. i don't even think i would say anything if i heard a song about me i would just take in your case, I would take the L because you be yeah. talking shit about. Well, depending on the song. yeah, I gotta stand on business. Um. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think that we really talked about like a lot of things that I wanted to get into. Um, one thing that I did forget to ask you about, and I know we gotta go because it's really getting late. And thank you again for being here so nah, late. It's all good. Um, your affiliations. Mm. Do you feel like um? Your affiliations have helped you, hurt you, or just like it is what it is. And I can elaborate if you need me to. Um Yeah, elaborate. Okay. So, um, example, if you go to your YouTube, mm -hmm. um, your first video that you have on there is a song with Quando Rondo. Yeah. There's a lot of like controversy around mm -hmm. him. Um for multiple reasons at this point. Yeah. Um, and sometimes artists will say, like, when they've worked with an artist that's very controversial, that has a lot of, like, words to be said about them, it, it hinders them from getting collaborations with other artists that may be, like, their ops or that don't fuck with them or anything like that. Do you feel like, not even with him specifically, but just with the people who you are affiliated with, have you seen 
anything that has like either hurt you or helped you? I mean, like going into the game, I was a fan of just you know music in general. So of course, there was a bunch of artists that I wanted to work with that I may not be able to get the chance to work with, but. I mean, it's the game at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I'm open to work with anybody who still is trying to work. Um, I'm kind of out the mix. I kind of, you know, kind of don't say too much or speak yeah. on none of those type of situations. So, like I said, I'm work. I'm open to working with everybody. But I know how the game goes. It's the game. You can't, I don't know. It's just the game. I just charge it to the game. It's whatever. Okay. Well, it's the game. Mm. But once again, RJ is willing to work with anybody. Yeah, Not anybody. Yeah. Anybody that fits the, fits the you know, <laughs> you know. Fits the status quo. You right. Feel like. Fits the status quo. <laughs> yeah. But that's really good to hear. Glad yeah. that you cleared that up. Yeah. Um, but is there anything else that you want to get into before we... Before we wrap up? Um, no, nah, not really, man. Album on the way. You're the problem. Make sure y'all go get that. Um, remember that. Dropping on the second with A Boogie, the mm -hmm. king of New York. Um, he said it's going to be a summer bop, y'all. So. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of motion right now. I appreciate all my fans. I appreciate you for having me here. Yes, yeah. we appreciate you for coming. Yeah. Let them know where to find you if they don't know. Yeah, on Instagram, you can find me at RJAERAP. Um, Twitter, Facebook, everything they saying. Yeah.